Hey guys, how you going? This is Billy Eat World again, and today we're going to return to the series I started a few months back looking at the older Battlefield games. And considering after this week we're going to know for sure what the next Battlefield game is going to be, it's probably a good idea that we take a look at Bad Company 2. But why is that? Well, I think it's generally accepted that BC2 is one of, and if not the best, Battlefield game ever made. So the question is, why is it so good? What made it stand out? And what can the current team at DICE learn from it for Battlefield 5? Now, whether or not you think BC2 is the best Battlefield game or not, I think we can probably all agree that DICE can learn a thing or two from this chapter in the franchise. Because I think what's become pretty obvious on social media in recent weeks is that a lot of the Battlefield community thinks it's probably about time for a Bad Company 3. Also, the other thing that I've noticed that's been coming up is that most people think as ambitious as Battlefield 1 was, it hasn't really stood the test of time. And so I put the question out to you guys this week. And this video is all about a few of the things that you guys said you missed the most from Bad Company 2. So to kick off, the first thing I want to mention in this video, and probably the main thing you'll notice when you fire up Bad Company 2, is that it's got personality. Because unlike in a lot of the more recent Battlefield games, the single player campaign does have a linear plot, and it isn't just some random collection of war stories. In a nutshell, the game follows the journey of a squad of US soldiers that are on a mission to stop a Russian colonel from building a superweapon. Which, in itself, does sound like a fairly serious plotline, but I think what stands out the most in this game is that it also manages to be funny at the same time. The other interesting thing about the campaign that for me made it so memorable is that it really shows the length and breadth of the sort of things that you can do in this game. Which, to be honest, is why, as you'll see in this video, I've chosen to show you guys the single player footage rather than multiplayer. I mean, in single player, you basically have the chance to experience everything the game has to offer, including things like gear unlocks and customizable loadouts. But unfortunately, the one downside of the game in 2018 is that because it is getting pretty old, there's just not enough active players anymore to say the same of multiplayer. Now, once you've gotten past the last point and gotten a little bit deeper into this game, you'll start to notice that Bad Company 2 also has a lot more subtle differences that set it apart from the more recent games. Or should I say not so subtle differences like the micro destruction mechanic, which basically allows players to destroy just about everything on a map. Unlike the previous games in the series, and actually also the more recent games in the series, you can go from knocking small sections out of walls right up to taking down complete buildings. And I think what's most frustrating is that this is something that DICE have obviously tried to, but haven't quite successfully managed to recreate in a number of Battlefield games since then. Probably the fundamental difference you'll notice about the destruction system in Bad Company 2 though is that it changes how players move. Because another thing that's worth mentioning is that the movement in this game can feel kind of clunky at times because for example, you can't strafe when you run. The most important thing as it relates to destruction though is that there's no vault mechanic which makes getting over low walls and getting through windows a bit of an issue. And so one of the things I can clearly remember from back then that I don't really do as much now was consciously blowing out walls and blowing up obstacles rather than trying to get around them. Now, the next point I want to make in this video is probably a pretty relevant one considering how this was handled in Battlefield 1. And that's the topic of attachments and specializations, which I should point out are lumped into the one category in this game. Because I think one thing that Bad Company 2 really did nail down was the idea that Battlefield players like the ability to customize their weapons. And this is something that was really lacking in the Battlefield games that came before it, and arguably is still very much lacking in Battlefield 1. I should point out though that technically Bad Company 2 wasn't the first Battlefield game to feature specializations because technically 2142 did have them, but what it did do differently was give the player a much wider range of available upgrades, including the ability to pick scopes and sights like we're used to these days. 
in saying that though, like I said before, the attachment and specialization systems were lumped together back then, and they weren't tied to specific weapons. And so compared to some of the later games like BF4, in this respect, Bad Company 2 does feel a lot simpler, which I think a lot of people would argue could actually be a good thing. But finally, the last point I want to make in this video, and easily my favourite standout feature of Bad Company 2, was its focus on the rush game mode. Because although traditional conquest does give you that large sandbox style experience we've come to know and love in Battlefield games, the series was lacking a smaller and more tactical mode. To be completely clear though, technically BC2 didn't actually introduce Rush, it actually made its first appearance in Bad Company 1 as a mode called Gold Rush. But the reason I've chosen to mention it as a key difference in this video is because I think Bad Company 2 was really where Rush was refined and it really built the framework of what we know as the Rush game mode today. I can honestly say that Rush was the game mode that got me hooked on the Battlefield franchise because unlike Conquest, it's the sort of game mode that naturally promotes team play. Because unlike in a much less linear Conquest game mode, where spawn RNG can screw you over, in Rush the gameplay is a lot more predictable. You can actually predict enemy movements and therefore flank around them, and considering you have a much more limited set of objectives, it's a lot easier to coordinate with your team. And not just that, I think most importantly for me, it's a mode that works best with less players, meaning in general, the game runs a lot smoother on your machine and the servers run a lot smoother as well. But anyway guys, that just about wraps up this video, so before you go, make sure you let me know what you think you missed the most from Bad Company 2. And also, considering it is the last week we have to speculate about BF5, let me know what you think it's going to be and if you're disappointed that it's probably not going to be Bad Company 3. As always though, let me know what you think in the comment section below and please subscribe if you want to keep up to date with my new videos. Also, don't forget you can keep in touch with me on Twitter and Discord using the links down below. And of course, until next time, see you later and have a good one.